The king of the kettlebell exercises is not the swing, even though it is the most popular. The exercise that is the USP for the kettlebell is the exercise that I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to explain it in detail. And I believe if you master it, you have mastered the kettlebell. It gives you a lot of bang for your buck. It's great conditioning, great strength building, great muscle building, and great for your mental focus and tenacity. But before we get started, I want you to join our free 50K giveaway. Get a chance to win lifetime access to our online kettlebell courses valued over $2,000. Link is in the description. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Leberstag hier. The powerful exercise that I'm gonna show you is the kettlebell snatch. And for the snatch, you have to have mastered the swing as well as the clean. Because in the swing, we have this hinge movement that you have to understand. And in the clean, we will cover the hand insertion that you have to understand. And once you have gotten these two down pat, the snatch is next. The snatch looks like this. In order for me to teach you the kettlebell snatch, we have to understand its components first. The first component is understanding and learning the hinge. The hinge is a crucial movement pattern that you need in many kettlebell exercises. It looks like this. Pushing the hips back, upper body leaning forward into this 90 degree angle. Now I feel tension right here. My spine is straight. I come back up and when I reach the top position again, I lock my hips. The second exercise that you need to understand is the single hand swing. Watch. This is how the swing works. I have a shoulder with stands. The kettlebell is approximately half a meter in front of me. When I start, I tilt the belt towards me so that the base is off the floor. Now I swing the kettlebell between my legs, making full contact with my body. From this position, I hip thrust the weight up, fully extending the hips, and now the kettlebell starts flying. As soon as the kettlebell reaches its apex, approximately at chest level, gravity sets back in. I wait for my arm to reconnect with my body, and when it reconnects, I go back into the hinge. Throughout the whole movement, I want to understand how to tense and how to relax the muscles. So when the kettlebell reaches chest level, for example, this is where I have my arm fairly loose. But when the arm reconnects with my body, I pull the arm close and keep tension. Now that we understand the swing, we want to move up to the clean. This is what it looks like. The same elements in the swing are also present in the clean. The difference is the hand insertion. So there are three phases that are happening. As the kettlebell comes up from this back swing, I'm hip thrusting the weight forward, boom, kettlebell starts flying. From this moment, I have a so-called acceleration pull, where I pull the kettlebell into this upward trajectory. After this pulling phase comes the hand insertion phase, where I insert my full hand inside the window, boom, of the kettlebell. After this has happened, I rack the kettlebell close to my body. And from this position, I turn the palm towards me, extend my forearm to drop the weight back into the backswing. One, two, three. So now that we have learned the single hand swing as well as the clean, we now progress to the snatch. But it is key here that you want to master these previous exercises first. All the same elements from the clean are happening in the snatch. The difference is it happens now overhead. So once I have the kettlebell overhead, boom, see that hand insertion that's happening? The arm is close to my ear. Now if I drop it, here's where it comes, becomes a little bit more tricky. I do the same thing, turn the palm towards me, and then I unlock the elbow and I let the weight drop. It is key here to make sure that the arm reconnects with the body as soon as possible. 
The clean as well as the snatch use the so-called element of leverage. With the clean, when I drop the kettlebell back into the backswing as well as bringing it back up, I use my upper body as leverage. So I drop the kettlebell, I lean back a little bit, wait for the arm to reconnect, and then I come back up and I lean back again a little bit to use the power of this leverage element of my upper body to generate more momentum. With the snatch, the same thing happens. The kettlebell's overhead. Now, I turn the palm towards me, elbow unlocks, and now I lean back a little bit to close the distance between the kettlebell and my center of mass. Finally, I wanna give you some tips, resources, and tools to master the king of the kettlebell exercises. Mastering the hand insertion where you insert your full hand inside the window of the kettlebell is part of the clean. However, you can also use a clock snatch to get used to the height where you have to insert your hand inside the window of the kettlebell. It looks like this. The hardest thing to master in the snatch is not only the upward phrase, but also the amortization when you drop the kettlebell back down. So if you want to learn one thing first, I would recommend doing the half snatch, where we only focus on the upward phase. And from this position, I drop the kettlebell into the rack, breathe, and then drop it back down. Wrist orientation is preference. You can either snatch the kettlebell with the front hand, where the thumb is pointing up, or with the back hand, where the thumb is pointing slightly towards your hip. An advanced element that I use to heave the kettlebell into the top fixation is the foot kick technique. If I snatch with my right side, my left leg becomes the propulsion, and my right leg becomes the aim. And the reason why I lift my right leg in that instance on my toes is because I want to keep that connection between my arm and my hips a little bit longer to use as much hip drive as I can to bring the kettlebell up. This also ties in to this leverage element that we talked about earlier. The snatch can also be done in different variations. We have one where I use a kind of diagonal approach. We have another one where I use a sagittal approach. And the final one is the deadlift approach. The snatch offers you so many things at once. Full body conditioning, strength, building quality muscle, strength endurance, explosiveness, everything in one package. On the flip side, it requires the most skill since it is one of the most advanced exercises you can do with the kettlebell. My final pro tip is teaching you when to apply chalk. If you're just starting out, you're a beginner, don't do it. Chalk increases friction. So when the kettlebell drops into the backswing and you catch it right here with your fingers, the kettlebell doesn't slip outside your hands. If you're getting sweaty hands, the kettlebell starts flipping back and forth inside your palm, which is an awful feeling. So chalk is great because it aids you in your grip strength. However, if you're still lacking technique, you are ripping apart your palm skin. So chalk is reserved for people who have already mastered the lift. So here's the next thing that you have to do. Like the video, consider subscribing, share with a friend, and then go watch this video. If you're just getting started with kettlebells, this is a great tutorial and beginner's video that's gonna help you to get started immediately. We're all about kettlebells. So if you are into kettlebells, you have to watch this video right now to get a head start. Click it right now.